youtube.com slash open up your mind 101. I'ma just bring on the brother who y'all all should know if y'all into hip hop. He go by the name of Professor Griff okay. from the Public Enemy. Let's give Griff a hand. Griff is gonna bring on Black Dot. <laughs> oh God, that's Black Power. <laughs> all right. All right. <laughs> Greetings, how y'all feel today? Yeah. All right. First of all, I want to give our thanks and praise to Almighty God a lot. Whatever you decide to call him in the day and time, wherever you at, spirituality, your spirituality. If you call it religion or spirituality, I prefer to uh, deal with spirituality as far as uh, enhancing and enlightening myself because the religion thing definitely got a lot of us caught up in some areas that we can't even get out our behinds out of it. No doubt. Um, we definitely want to give thanks to your queen for that beautiful meal. Now give her a round of applause. Times when we eat like that, we get nigga itis. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> we don't want to do nothing but go to sleep. That's right. <laughs> but uh, see, a meal like that is supposed to energize you because mm. it's organic and it's healthy. A lot of times we eat the food that the slave master threw out of the back door. That's what makes you sluggish. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So how many people eating like that every day? Come on, talk to me. Right here, guys. Right. How many people would like to eat like that every day? Yeah. Oh, good. She said she's gonna start a small restaurant in the front. She's <laughs> gonna serve some meals every right. Sunday. But anyway, um, it's nice to laugh because uh, a lot of times when you see rap artists on on the videos and that kind of thing, and you see them in concert, we always see them off at a distance. We never get a chance to talk to them face to face, shake their hand, and get to know them as people. You understand what I'm saying? A lot of times with them. They wake up in the morning, they got to put on the game mm -hmm. and come out in the world and be a rapper. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I'm glad that Sarnetta invited me to come do the lecture November 27th. How many people was here? Two people? Oh, I got to come back then, Sarnetta. That's right. We waiting on us. Uh, All right, on cool. Did a lecture uh, entitled The Pacify Antidote. We dealt with the psychological effects of, uh, of uh, hip-hop on the youth. We dealt with the uh, covert action against hip-hop and why it's affecting the youth the way it is. Um, he has a lecture up in front um, you can purchase for a couple of dollars. Um, hopefully he can invite me back. I'll give you a date when I can come on back and do yes, part sir. two to that, definitely. Yeah. Um, but I'm not going to be long because I want to bring the brother on because I want to sit down and hear what he had to say. I started out 5 o'clock this morning in Atlanta, Georgia, mm. determined to get here so I can introduce the brother because he did the same thing for me. You understand know what I'm saying? And I'm doing that to let everybody know, and, and, and I want you to get this on film so we can let the other rappers know. We can't get too big that we can't come down to, to serve the community. Right. You understand know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's right. It's time now. All we do is we get the riches, the diamonds, the cars, the houses, and we drive by the house mm -hmm. of consciousness. Mm -hmm. You understand know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So what we, what I like to, uh, to let people know to do is when you see the average rapper on the street, Talk to them, exchange cards, do that kind of thing, get to know them as people. I seen the DVD you did when you stopped uh, Slick Rick on the street okay. and Alan Iverson. How many people seen that? Mm -hmm. It's like these brothers just ain't got no real words. That's right. Mm -hmm. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So what happens, and maybe you can explain it in your lecture, what happens when they go through that gate, that portal, that door, and they step to the other side where they don't know nobody no more? Mm -hmm. Do you understand what I'm saying? That has to stop. Um, when Public Enemy first began, we wanted to serve the people and raise the consciousness level of the people. All right, that was our first mission. All the other stuff came later on. I don't know what's going on now. Maybe we can talk about that <laughs> later on. <laughs> with what um, Chuck is doing and with what Flav is doing on TV. I'm sure some of you seen Strange and Love and that kind of madness. Bizarre world. Right, so um, maybe we could deal with that a little bit later on. But I brought, brought a few things I'd like to um, share with you. I was trying, I was on the plane trying to figure out how can I introduce a brother of this magnitude 
you know, with the work that he's doing and the work that he's putting out. It's hard to even say in a few minutes, you know, all that the brother not only has in the book, because the scripture teaches us that if all the uh, seas were ink and all the trees were pens, you can never exhaust the words of Allah because all Allah's words are not in the book. And I'm sure everything this brother has to offer us is not in the book. What is this about? 400 pages? It's about 300 pages. Everything is not in the book. That's why it's mandatory that he come do the lecture so he can bring this to light and get you to understand it. You understand know what I'm saying? A lot of times, um, see, we walk by the Bible and the Holy Quran that way. And a lot of the other scriptures that we take and we put on our dashboard and put on our dresser, and that's where it collects dust. But we have to go into the book and make the book relevant and bring it to life so we can raise the conscious level of our people. How many people picked up the U.S. News and World Report today? I had a small brief talk with Dr. Francis Cress Wilson a couple of weeks ago. I went to Washington, D.C. at Howard University to go sit in so I could hear her speak. And it was very enlightening simply because she brought back to mind the whole concept of why she even teaches and why she has a practice and why she struggles so hard to get black people to understand racism, white supremacy. Dr. Neely Fuller said, if you do not understand racism, white supremacy, in its completeness, in its fullness, everything else you try to understand will only confuse you. That's right, that's right. You have to understand that first. <laughs> so I'd like to say this. If you have a message to the black man, if you have the Willie Lynch letter, read it and understand it. Don't just have it. Read it and understand it and how it's working today. How many people have it? Oh, that's good. But I gave you the taste test then. In the Willie Lynch letter, it says, he wrote it in the 1700s. He said 300 years, this was to last the slave masters and the slave owners for 300 years. When is that 300 years up? 212. 212, right. That's right. So we're almost at that point. We're still being affected by it. And since we're right at the threshold of it being on its way out, going on its way out, we have to give it a good shove. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> so if you know it, you have to infect three other people. That's an African proverb. Mm -hmm. Each one teach three. In America, we say each one teach one because that's all we can handle. Mm -hmm. All right? <laughs> so each one needs to teach three. How many people have learned something that's been beneficial to you and you actually pass it on to three other people? Yeah. Show a hand. Yeah. That's good. We need to continue that. Starting here today with what the brother's about to drop on us. But in the U.S. News and World Report, you'll know we're creeping up on this unholy day called Christmas. How many people are celebrating Christmas this year? Don't lie. <laughs> no, don't be ashamed because, you see, at least they're being honest because that's where they're at. And maybe they'd like to share something with us today, something that we don't know. It says, um, before you pass judgment, this, this is now, this is um, George Bush talking to Santa. It says, before you pass judgment, you should know I've seen your library records, not to mention your bank statements. Now, why is George Bush saying this to Santa with the Patriot Act in his hand? You follow me? Not only that, you have kind of sleeves of rice here <laughs> in a caption where it says, it says, we don't condone torture, we are against it. It says, um, and that's not what we're about. And, there, and, she, and, he's talk, and she's talking to an older white guy who has Europe written on his chest. And the white guy answers her, it says, uh, stop, you're killing me. Now, why am I pointing out these two things? Simply because racism, white supremacy is in full effect. All right? And we have to understand it to this degree. Right now, in your mind, when I mention racism, white supremacy, if you don't have a fundamental working definition in your conscious mind, working, knowing, and putting it into effect, and coming up with a plan to work your way around it, through it, and teaching others, then we failed. So by a show of hands, how many people know and understand a fundamental working definition of racism, white supremacy? About five people. Give me the nine areas of people activity that nearly full of laid out. Business. Pardon me? Entertainment. Entertainment is one. Business. Education. No. Education. Education. Religion. 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 Sex. Come on, talk black to me. Military. Economics. 
Health. 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 No. War. War. Straight No. No, they You see, we're struggling through this. Fifty people in the room and we're struggling. We have to know this, each and every individual in the room. Because if you don't understand that, what he's about to bring to you today, you're not going to understand this. And why hip hop? <laughs> Brother says, let me make it real easy. <laughs> real easy. Yeah. 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 United yeah. Independent, Independent Compensatory Code System and Concept. A textbook, workbook for thought, speech, and or action for victims of racism, white supremacy. This is the book that Nearly Fuller wrote. And this is the basis to what Dr. Francis Cress Walsing um, read in order to uh, put together the ISIS papers. Mm -hmm. We have to understand this. In every aspect of our lives on a day-to-day -day basis, racism is in full effect. You may get racism confused with discrimination. All right? It's, it's a whole lot different. Racism is a global system, locally and globally, maintained, supported, right, by white people, people who classify themselves as white. All right? In all areas of people activity. You have to understand this. Now, why am I bringing that to mind? Simply because everything that you're seeing that's going down on the news, you may get glimpses of it because I know you work hard every day trying to make ends meet. You may get glimpses of it every day. So when I get glimpses of it, I stop and I say to myself, okay, why is hip hop in the condition that it's in today? Right? And why are the rappers making the kind of moves that they're making? Everyone has to get paid. Don't get me wrong. Everyone has to eat. Am I right or wrong? Okay. But whence came this overindulgence of having to have 15 cars, mm. you know, four and five houses, at the detriment of selling filth to the youth? And then we turn around and support our own destruction. Mm -hmm. Are you following me? Yes, sir. So I wonder <coughs> if the rappers know and understand Mind Control of the United States by Stephen Jacobson. How many people have had this book? Or familiar with the book? Please, let's just not sit here today and think that we're going to remember this stuff. Take out a pen, piece of paper. I wish I had it to give it to you. Do we have some paper and pens up in the front? You need to get this information or just buy the DVD. This kind of information is very important. And we cannot, as parents and as educators, right? Let stuff like this get by us simply because we're responsible for the youth. We always say, okay, this song is on the air. I wonder why so and so, I wonder why the radio is playing this particular kind of song. But you see, as long as we sit back and allow stuff like that, it's not their fault. It's our fault. It's our fault. That's right. <coughs> you understand what I'm saying? <coughs> I have a nine year old daughter. I'm with her in the car. It's my responsibility. What I'm playing on the radio. The radio play whatever they want to play, That's but it's right. up to me to control that environment that my daughter is in. Right. Are you following me? Mm -hmm. Education doesn't start in the school. Education starts at home. And for the women in the audience, the sisters in the audience, it actually starts in the womb, how you take care of yourself. Because right. there's certain things that you pass on, I'm sure he's going to get into it. I don't want to bite into his lecture, but there's certain things that you pass on. Are you following me? Let me just get to the meat of this and I'm going to bring the brother on. YouTube.com slash open up your mind 101.